Hello, friends and family. Uh, last time we were together was uh, a year ago, in late July of 2017, and now it is a year later, on the 29th of July. Uh, we miss uh, Cheryl and, and uh, Kevin. Uh, Lisa is here. She's a technical expert. We're going to do uh, part three of this uh, family history and looking forward to it. Uh, we miss you all uh, and I thank you for this opportunity to do this. Where we left off was uh, following uh, my military career and we're going to uh, continue on after the military career and uh, the move back from Hawaii to Texas and, and a few other items and uh, what we don't get done tonight, what we'll do is continue on tomorrow morning. Uh, we had a lot of fun today, a lot of physical activity outside. Texas is hot, and uh, so I don't know how long we'll last tonight, but we'll give it the best try. Following retirement from the Air Force, uh, I was given a very good send-off by my contemporaries and, and associates at uh, PACF headquarters. Uh, my desire at that point was and and as a family to continue on in Hawaii with a career uh, either in business or preferably in aviation uh, found it very interesting that as I applied for different jobs following my military career uh, there existed over in Hawaii a kind of reverse discrimination uh, not owning land and not having the right color skin, they were hired people uh, based on local characteristics rather than qualifications or talent. Uh, I applied for airlines. I did not own property in Hawaii, so they felt that it was not, not appropriate that uh, I possibly may go to work for them and then go back to the States after spending money on training. Uh, I did, uh, was fortunate in having a small airline hire me, flying small airplanes. Uh, always wanted to be an airline pilot as I re reflected earlier in uh, our discussion. Uh, not that I wanted to do this permanently, but I wanted to stay in the management end. But a uh, small airline did hire me flying twin engine Cessnas, flying mainly local people in Ireland. Uh, I trained for this job that was very difficult simply because it was a single pilot operation carrying nine other passengers in the airplane, no flight attendant. I didn't have to load bags, but, but uh, the training uh, demanded that I be able to handle any emergency and also the passengers on board should that happen. Uh, it was probably one of the most rigorous training situations I've ever been through. Uh, it took about a month. I started the training before I actually retired. Uh, I was qualified. I worked at that job for three and a half months. Uh, very interesting in Rhode Island, working with very interesting people, taking doctors to the leper colony at Molokai. Uh, landing at the small strip down below by the ocean. It was a throwback to World War II where 32 miles from Honolulu in 1988, I was taking a throwback in time to 1942, landing on a small little concrete strip going towards the ocean. Uh, Stopping the airplane, flying off on a P or taxing off on a PSB strip to a grass hut, and having the lepers come out and actually unload the bags. Uh, it was kind of an emotional thing. We were ca mainly carrying nurses and doctors and medical staff down there to take care of the people with uh, that malady. Uh, other than that, I was flying to Maui. I was flying to uh, Lanai, back and forth. Uh, numerous islands. I had a chance to fly uh, Marine Reagan when she came over there when uh, George Bush number 
one was running for president and uh, flew her around the different islands. Uh, very interesting, but basically working three days off, two on three, first day off being wanting to sleep. Uh, uh, it was a, kind of a rigorous job and I uh, knew something that I didn't want to do permanently, but a lot of fun and it was fulfilling a wish that, that I was able to fly commercially after a military career. Uh, received a phone call in November that year. I retired in July and November received a phone call from Waco, Texas. And it was from a company called Reflectone that was starting a training program for Navy pilots uh, and crew members who were transitioning from an airplane that communicated with submarines with a long wire low frequency antenna. They were moving to a bigger airplane, the Boeing 707, which my past experience in the KC-135 was uh, very uh, familiar with what I was to do. Uh, they were buying, the Navy was buying 16 of these airplanes. The Navy had no experience flying these big airplanes, but the Air Force did, and I fulfilled that, that uh, need for them. Plus, with my training experience, I was hired on and became a training manager and manager of flight operations. Uh, the company acquired two Boeing 707s that converted them to the avionics and equipment that the E-6 or the new Navy airplane had. We got that airplane, those airplanes up and flying. We uh, started a flying training program for the Navy and a recurring training program here in Waco. We did that for about a year and a half. Uh, the program was very successful along with uh, very uh, advanced simulator training and academic training for the Navy. Uh, an event happened that year, it was the fall of the Soviet Union. Uh, Gorbachev and uh, Reagan got together and, and uh, decided that uh, the Soviet Union was no longer a threat. Our budget people saw that uh, that was a wonderful way to save money and cut a lot of contracting money and the company I worked for was a victim of that. We. Uh, ended up uh, doing a lot of cutting in that program. The Navy wanted to take the flying program back and have their people doing it, even though they didn't have a lot of experience. Um, I had hired roughly 20 Air Force people that had, had a lot of experience in uh, uh, instructing and so forth, and they decided to take the program back where I had 10, 12,000 hour pilots, they were going to replace them with three and 400 hour uh, Navy pilots. Uh, long story short, nobody was killed, although they did damage, some, damage these two airplanes in a couple of incidents. Uh, but basically, I was given the option to either go back and run the similar program or, and move the operation up to Oklahoma City. Uh, I didn't mind Oklahoma City, but I liked Waco better and decided to seek employment elsewhere and went across the street and went to work for Chrysler Technologies Airborne Systems, where we were back flying two NKC-135s that were involved in uh, electronic countermeasures work, uh, basically jamming uh, radars, training our Navy to defeat any uh, attacker that would try to uh, attack the uh, naval fleets, carrier fleets, at that time, first deploying to Iraq uh, and the Persian Gulf area. And this was in the early 90s. Uh, went to work for them, very challenging work, a lot of time away, a lot of time in Puerto Rico, Virginia, uh, Oceania, or excuse me, uh, uh, San Diego. Uh, not only working the active duty Navy fleets, but doing research and development which was on the new Aegis uh, ships in the Navy uh, that are now the stalwart part of the Navy fleet now. Uh, we 
did this for uh, approximately five years, and again, contracting money was a hand. The airplanes we were flying under contract with the Navy that were up for major inspections, and it was going to cost a lot of money, and the Navy did not want to spend that money. Figured there was not really a big uh, countermeasures threat electronically, which today we find that different, but the system went away. At that point, I went to work on my own. I was fortunate to go to work at Baylor University as a deputy uh, chair of the Aviation Science Department at Baylor. Worked with students, worked contract work with uh, air sampling, air quality in various cities in Texas. Uh, did that for a number of years. We were mainly doing that during the winter, but I was working with students during the, during the uh, uh, winter months. And, flying a King Air that was specially equipped to do air sampling uh, during those summer months. And many times flying 10, 15 uh, days in a row, uh, we would have a conference call with the weather people down in Austin to find out where the biggest threat for uh, gaseous threats to inhabitants uh, and then decide at 10 o'clock where we're going to go, run out the airplane, either go to, go to Austin, uh, go to Houston, go to Dallas, go to San Antonio, Big Bend Park. Uh, we did them all. And it was very interesting work. Did that five and a half years. Uh, uh, we fulfilled that obligation until they were able to get more ground sensors. And uh, at that point, ended up working on my own an individual contractor. Uh, I worked for several companies in the Waco area. Waco was a very aviation adept community. Uh, worked uh, test pilot and uh, sales consultant uh, for uh, Ram aircraft that did modifications on twin Cessnas that I flew in Hawaii when I was working for that airline. Also did test pilot work for Air Impressions and a few other companies and People would call me up uh, for the individual contract work. Uh, ended up, uh, Ram Aircraft called me after doing this consulting work and wanted me to come full time. I went as a sales manager and consultant with them uh, for a number of years, a couple of years, and uh, did that until I was well past 65. I thought, well, it was time. I enjoyed my flying career. I'd flown over 55 years. And, God has been good to me and taken care of me, despite many of my mistakes, and, uh, and uh, so I uh, decided to retire. Uh, I do miss flying, but not that much. do a lot of volunteer work now, uh, uh, involved in uh, a lot of local activities, and uh, I find it uh, a nice time to be in retirement, enjoying life, enjoying family. We travel a lot. We've used to, even though in my professional career I did a lot of flying uh, or a lot of uh, traveling to different areas of the world, but uh, as a family we've decided uh, to uh, make anywhere from five to eight trips a year to various parts of the world, and we've done that. I uh, have enjoyed it immensely, and uh, I think following this uh, we'll cover a couple other subjects. And by the way, I enjoy Lisa being here and, and Colin. Uh, again, we miss the rest of the family. Uh, you're in our prayers and concerns. And uh, great to talk to you again. I think we'll continue probably another time, get into a few other subjects here. But uh, it's great to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks, Dan.